All right, we're all pretty um, male in the the game of uh, ham radio. There's a few females, but mainly males. So looking at a rear end is pretty much um, you know what we do. Although you know I'm more of a a bust man myself. But anyway, today we're looking at a rear end, but <laughs> this is the rear end of a TS 930S. Um, just to picture a 930S. Oh, just put this one back together, but um, and then we're probably going to have to pull it to bits. But that's the 930S there. Great radio, but they have their problems. And um, we've got. Um, I've actually been tracking down a PLL fault on this one. Um, initially, I really thought f for once we didn't have. Uh, it actually looked like, it, uh, in my mind, initially that it might have been just not switching the right voltages but after checking a million voltages no PLL's working fine unfortunately um, I would have preferred it be a PLL fault because what I'm about to show you is just one of those painful 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 faults that you just go uh, mainly because the parts are not available anymore in the right gain and there's a lot of things that can be a bit of an issue let me show you just uh, very quickly uh, we won't get very much with, uh, far with this I'm actually going to pull the um, output stage out of this one and probably change it over just to get one working radio for the minute we've got a second fault in the other radio but then we can just concentrate on uh, giving the client well, it's not really a client it's a mate <laughs> my mate back uh, one nine thirty to get him going but we'll have a look at this board here for a second all right so because i work one-handed <laughs> with my camera uh, i do have that stand that i bought recently um, but it gets in the way I'm, I'm gonna try and get something better going with video at some stage all right so this clip lead is connected to my multimeter uh, and we're just auto ranging on the fluke at the moment. Uh, this is my fluke 17B, uh, my really trusty uh, little unit. And um, I've got to be honest, I'm very, very keen to buy one of those new, um, oh, I can't think of the name now. <sighs> Goodness, the big six and a half inch, um, um, ah, actually it's not that big, it's about five and a half inch display. And uh, the, uh, the Chinese one. And uh, I know uh, Peter at um, Tower X Bench uses one on his bench, and uh, I'm, I'm aspiring to upgrade a lot of my bench stuff to what Peter uses because um, I figure maybe he's not so smart. Maybe he's just got really good test equipment. <laughs> I think the opposite might be true. I think uh, he's uh, extremely smart. Wow, and he's got good test equipment. Okay, so so this is a common fault in, and there, it's an annoying fault. So we're going to go from the um, uh, collector over to the emitter of the MRF 485 and here we go look at that uh, hang on sorry I just dropped off dropped off the thing for a second there now my fluke will sit there and work its way down quite slowly but that is uh, uh, definitely a short now just so you can have a look yes we have disconnected uh, from so we're out of circuit here we're not in circuit this one will be the same. I will absolutely put money on it. Uh, I won't take it out of circuit for the second. Uh, I'm just kind of curious just to hook onto it for a sec and have a look. And look at that. So this is a very typical, I should have checked this first to be honest. I was just so sure that, um, uh, I, I had a 930 of a mates I looked at some time back and we fixed a PLL issue, but that was because he'd been in there cutting diodes trying to make it work on 27 megs and it made quite a mess but the symptoms were no transmit and receive was okay so of course <laughs> it's so much easier to get to the PLL board than to pull all this out uh, and uh, so I, I actually thought we might have got lucky but no we're not going to get lucky here so yep this is um, uh, just uh, for a bit of a clue look I, I do pull um, all this out uh, because have a look at this you can sort of see that you know there's a lot been going on um, I didn't see that before too look at that now this is interesting I've never seen that before in my life geez we didn't see that before that's very interesting that relay is basically just sort of popped out uh, still on one side um, and uh, uh, that would be all in the filter switching but I've got to be honest um, that may have been what's caused uh, the MRF MRF 485s to go um, often you'll find uh, now I've got these are in circuit now just just as a bit of a caveat mTOR um, when you test things in circuit um, you do it really just to check for direct you know shorts etc it's not really much to tee onto there uh, well I suppose they're ground aren't they so 
I can just go to there. Oh, not really. There. Is that ground? Yeah, it should be. Just double check that. And uh, let's have a look. That's ground. Okay. So, look, when the 485s go on the um, 930s, often the finals don't go. Uh, the 422s, uh, they, they live. Let's have a look. Yeah, okay. And let's have a look. Base then collector. Mm, okay. Mm, that should be a dead short there, of course. So what do we got? Oh. We will have to pull these out of line, um, just to see what's going on there. Uh, I want to have a bit of a closer look at that. Generally, when the 485s are gone, um, oh, sorry, that's not focusing very well. Uh, when the 485s are gone, often the 422s, let's just bring this light over here, a bit more light. Too much light. Uh, uh, the four double twos uh, don't uh, don't tend to go, but um, that's looking very sus actually. Um, no, nah, I need to pull those out of circuit. Um, so that's registering twenty five ohms there. That's registering zero ohms there. All right, um, and we'll just go back onto this other room. Um, um, a bit of the, uh, no, mm, okay. Well, this is going to be fun. Uh, so we just want to pull these out and have a look too. But for the moment, you know what? Um, we sort of know that we've got a problem there. Uh, if I just put this back over here, would be a good idea. Uh, put them on that uh, 485 on the emitter. Look at that. It's uh, out of circuit and it is bad. All right, so not good, very bad. <laughs> it's um, if if you could just buy these and they were the right gain, uh, life would be really good. But you can't. Um, I was reading an article. Uh, by the way, uh, not an expert, just much much smarter than people that me have um, been down this path before. So you can buy MRF four eight fives, but they're the wrong gain and they blow up in five seconds flat and. Uh, this is not good. So another chap put a couple of uh, 2SC 1307s, I think, in there, uh, 1969s. Um, but that's a hell of a lot of work too. To um, uh, so there's no easy way out with um, when you get one of these. It's being a pain in the butt. So what I'm going to do, and actually I'm going to pull this unit out as well. I think um, I don't know what the heck's happened here. I've never seen this before. It's it's like uh, yeah, I don't know. Weird. Okay. Um, I mean, look, it's probably a very easy fix, but, uh, you know, it just, just makes me think that uh, uh, it's had... One of the things I noticed when I went into this unit is every screw's bird. Every Look, this has all been out before, and this is not knocking my mate because he's probably bought these from somebody and hoping to get them going and all that sort of stuff. But when you get things out, <clears throat> excuse me, and, you know, all the screws and you're finding bits of rubber inside like this and, jeez, um, you know, lots of things that are telltales that people have been in here before. There's bits of plastic cut, um, you know, that, and there's just stuff everywhere. Uh, it's, it's not good. So uh, just one of the first things you do check on a um, output problem with the um, TS930, um, you want to check your 28 volts coming off here and... Um, uh, the, the difficulty is that you sometimes will get 28 volts off there, but of course you're not presenting a load at this time, so sometimes you need to um, load it up and have a look. We were getting 28 volts off it, but um, uh, I've got to be honest, um, uh, that, um, that really is the least of our problems <laughs> at the moment. Uh, the supplies on these things, are um, they blow up regularly, they're not a good supply. There is a third party uh, modification supply that you can get. Uh, which is a little bit of a pain in the butt, but it is better than this supply here. These used to overheat so much, so there's a lot of issues on the 930. So if this is convincing you not to buy a TS930, well, good, because, you know what, buy, oh, I don't know, something else. <laughs> I was about to say something really stupid then. I was about to say buy a 940, but <laughs> I've fixed a dozen of those too over the years. So, um, yeah, oh, don't listen to me for the moment. Anyway. What I'm going to do, uh, I'm just going to go have a look at the uh, RF stage in this one here, which I've only just put back together. This was right down over the American barn. I had those, all these in bits, and I had to move it all down here. Now, one of the things I do is I put things back together again when I'm moving them because sometimes um, 
uh, in between the putting back together, the moving and coming into here, you know, weeks can pass um, just with me being in hospital so much. So for me, it's better to put things back together um, because I know that, you know, whilst I've got to spend you know, 20 minutes pulling it down again, um, and in this case I'm going to cry because this one here I've um, had back together and I'm, I'm virtually going to be pulling it back to bits again. I actually didn't think I was going to need to look at that one again today, but I possibly will. So my theory doesn't always work, but um, one of the things you do need to do is, you know, uh, you know, keep a good inventory of all your bits and what you know where you took them out of, what screws came from where, and etc. Uh, etc. Et now, you know, I'm tempted to pause this video and take the next PA stage out and change it over and show you that. But I think we'll do a part two. Um, as you know, I'm a terrible editor of videos, so I never bother. <laughs> At least you know you're always getting something live because I'm so lazy. Um, but yeah, look, I, I think we'll just sort of call this the MRF 485 fault, and you know the fact that these um, two devices right here, uh, MRF 485 here, MRF 485 here, are very likely to be your transmit problem um, a lot of the times. And maybe don't spend so much time thinking at a PLL fault like I did because I was stupid. I should have pulled the stage out to start with, to be honest, um, and, um, and just double check this. It's a known fault. And sometimes this is the problem with us, um, us uh, repair type guys. Um, is that we get something in our mind and we'll go chase it and the truth is you know we're just not doing the obvious and today um look i've got to be honest i went chasing a pll for on this about a month ago and checking out um and, and to be fair there are a couple of cut diodes in there that shouldn't have been cut so i'm glad we uncovered that and fixed that um and um this is not unusual uh people doing mods and bits and they just kind of do it until they get what they get anyway all that being said uh, my gut feel should have been to go straight into the output stage, pull it out, check these dri uh, driver transistors because we know they're such a known fault. And as you can see from the metering that we just did, um, they're as dead as dead. They don't get any more dead. There is, um, yeah, no more dead. Anyway, I'm going to... Um, Look, I, I don't even want to tell you how many hours I've spent on these mucking around. Um, the other one's got a nasty fault and I'm just at the stage where... I hate to sacrifice one for the other, but if I can, I will, um, and at least get something going out of one unit. Um, I've been going on both units for a while now, thinking I just got to repair both of them. I'm going to be less than you know the person I should be if I don't get them both going. And I've now worked out uh, that mm, that's not going to be so easy. So we'll give you a bit of a part two on where we go with this TS930 um, <laughs> scenario. Um, if you own one. Um, don't send it to me, um, send it anywhere else on the planet but me. Um, after this, I never want to see another 930 again. <laughs> you know what, they're great radios when they're going, I really got to say that, but um, you know, when you get one that's been mucked around with a bit like this one, uh, yeah, you are chasing your tail a bit. Uh, okay, so I was joking, certainly buy a 930. Um, I, as far as the repair, no, definitely don't send it to me um, because um, I just haven't got the time to spend on ones like this. They're just, it's just too hard uh, as far as time. And, and look, you know, just space. Uh, you need, I had this set on up on two benches out in the American barn and I didn't do any videos out there because I just sort of thought, you're just going to cry when you see how much room it was taking up to do it. So in the end, I've decided to come into the air. It's a bit, been a bit warm out there, so I've come into the air-conditioned uh, workshop here where I've got about a tenth of the space, but, um, you know, so I've got to pull things on and off the bench. Uh, if you're into weightlifting, uh, definitely pick up a uh, TS930 a few times a day. You shall build muscles like you've never seen before. I carried both these in, one in each arm, you know, sort of uh, by the handles. The whole time thinking, what happens if the handles snap? You know, I'm walking along in thongs and I'm thinking, what happens if the handles snap? To my American viewers, thongs are things you wear on your feet, like these, by the way, not the things that you wear on your butt. So I just want to be very, very clear on that uh, because you could be very confused about what I just said then being Australian, being American, there's a little bit of difference in the uh, terminology. Uh, thongs. Uh, you call them slip-ons, don't you? Slip-ons in the US, yeah. Um, I think the slip-ons, yeah. Oh, goodness. I should know that. I spent enough time over there. Anyway, all right, 73s. Um, I'm sorry we haven't actually got a finish on this one, but this is just a preliminary look, you know, uh, like I was saying. Uh, just remember, 
check these out of circuit, uh, not like I just did. I, I just want a rough look. I, I think something's going on with one of them. The other one looked sort of okay, but look, it can in circuit. Just the fact that one looks very different from the other, that concerns me. But generally, you know, pull them out of circuit, test them. Uh, so lift up your tabs on each one of them. Well, certainly the two tabs, um, uh, as long as you get the base collector up, you know, so, um, yeah, well, it doesn't matter. Um, as long as you've got two connections off, any of the two connections, really. Uh, as far as, uh, when I say two connections, uh, not these two. <laughs> of course, these are commoned up. So uh, if you could just get the um, base and emitter off, um, and, uh, uh, sorry, base collector off, um, then you'd be fine. All right, well, what else? Uh, no, that's about it. All right, um, we just got a bit of a struggle going on here, and and I've got no bench space because uh, I'm gonna I'm, I'm not gonna have any floor space. Seriously, I'm so this is crap. No, I'm sorry, that's terrible to say that, but this this is just bad, bad, bad. Anyway, we are getting cleaned up soon uh, in here because we just have to, uh, and uh, just so I can sort of keep restoring and mucking around with our display. But um, yeah, there's another one that. Um, uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm only just going to show you this. I'm not even going to say anything. Okay. Um, um, yes. Quite a few hours on that one too. We're working on that right now. Oh my God. Anyway, okay. Um, this has been a sympathy session for Branson. Uh, you know, I'm just looking for sympathy and notes below saying we feel for you. Um, uh, if only I was there to help. Uh, what else? Anything. Yeah, look, that's all good. All right. Thanks for having a little look at this and uh, we'll go change that stage over. We'll do a video of just, you know, the change out of the stage and um, hopefully um, the other stage is working okay. Uh, <laughs> being that it's got a power supply fault in this one, uh, it, it's, the, the bad news is that sometimes a power supply fault, they'll go over voltage and they'll take these this whole line. <laughs> it just takes out everything, anything. So you can have really, really disastrous uh, results when a supply goes bad too. Uh, because your output stage is commoned up and ah uh, with the yeah with the uh, with the power supply so all right one uh, uh, very unwell TS nine thirty S AT just remember AT does have the antenna tuner doesn't work but but it's got one and uh, relays hanging out seven threes guys all the best. <laughs>